Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Ian Corley and I'm an expert on the Business English qualifications here at Cambridge Assessment English. And today I'm going to be delivering a presentation uh, looking at the, the skills that students can use to improve their chances of doing well in the Business English exams. And we're going to be looking specifically uh, at the listening and the speaking part of the exam because I know these are two areas which um, students often feel uh, quite concerned about before they take the qualifications. So, let's start. By the end of the session, we're going to be looking at a number of, of different aspects of the, of the Business English qualifications. Here, you can see some statements about what we're going to be studying today and there are some words that are missing. I just want you to take a minute just to have a look at those statements and think about which words could fit into the gaps. Okay, now you've had a chance to think about them, let's have a look at each statement individually. So, by the end of today's session, you will have understood the benefits of taking a business qualification You'll learn more about the different parts of the exam, especially the listening and the speaking. You're going to have understood the best and most practical ways to prepare and develop your language skills. You're going to under, you will have understood some useful strategies that you can use in the exam. And of course, hopefully, I'll be able to answer any questions that you have in your mind about taking the exam. So, you just used a very important skill that you're going to need both in real life and the exam, and that's called prediction. Prediction is all about thinking what could come next. So in the example I gave you, we had some statements and you had to try and predict which words fitted into the gaps. Well, this is really important for um, the Business English qualifications because here we've got an example uh, taken from the listening exam. And you can see that in this task, what you need to do is to complete some missing information by listening and filling in the gaps. This is taken from the Business Qualifications Beck Vantage exam, which is at B2 level. So for these gaps, you need to find the name of a building. You need to look for a number, you need to find the name of a talk and a description of the subject and content of the exam. But what you'll find with all qualifications from Cambridge English is that you often have to um, think about words which are similar to other words. These are called synonyms. So for example, a name of a building is a venue, uh, a number could be an amount. The title is the name of a talk and a topic is a description of the subject and content. Now by thinking of these words in advance and by trying to understand what it is that you're going to have to predict, it makes your job much easier when you actually take the exam itself. So it's really important that you work through the questions, think about the kinds of answers that you're going to have to give and in this case try to work out which words you were going to have to predict. So, let's go back to think a little bit more about why you should take a business qualification with Cambridge. Now, this is something called a word cloud, and I've created this using lots of words which uh, relate to why you should take a business qualification. So, looking at this in a bit more detail, we've got words like communication and confidence and being ready and professional and skills and practical. And basically by studying for and taking a Business English qualification, you can be much more confident about the language that you have and your ability to communicate using that language. Um, it's gonna help you to develop your professional skills so that you can use them when you start working. So some other words here like multinational, and globally, and accepted, and corporations. 
And the reason why I've chosen these words is to show you that our business qualifications are accepted all over the world by lots of different companies and organisations. You can find out the details on our website, but it's great that when you have your Business English qualification, you'll be able to take it to a company and it's real proof of your language ability and they will recognise that. We've got some more words here like determination and learn and trust and show. And really I've chosen these words because passing an examination is difficult and in doing so you've proved that you've got the determination that it takes to do well. That's important skills for a company. They're looking for employees who've got that determination and drive. And also, companies will trust the results that you get from Cambridge Assessment English because we have over 100 years of, uh, of expertise in creating and delivering exams. So, the reason why I, I chose a word cloud is that it's a great way for you to record new words and topics. It helps you to revise words and you can, you, you, you can use and create word clouds to help test yourself and test your classmates and then you can use the words that appear in the word cloud to generate sentences. These are all great skills that you can use in helping you to expand your vocabulary and to practice before the test. So, why should you study for a business qualification? Well, first of all, you can use it to build your English communication skills. You can also use a qualification to enhance your CV, to stand out from the crowd. If you're going to a job interview and you've got a business qualification on your curriculum vitae and another candidate doesn't, it helps to show the employer that you've got what it takes. And that's our next point here. Studying for one of our exams, as I mentioned before, isn't easy. You have to show drive and determination. You've got to prove what it takes. And those are skills that a company is looking for. I mentioned that our exams are accepted globally and you can check our website to see the names of all the companies and institutions that recognise our exams. You get detailed practical reporting that shows what you can do with the language that you've learnt and we've got lots of free resources to help you to learn. There are three levels for the business qualifications, preliminary, vantage and higher. And you can see they all relate to a CFR level. For those of you who don't know what the CFR is, it's a set of standards of English across six levels. And you can see here from A1, which is an elementary level, all the way up to C2, which is a very advanced level. It's an international standard. We use it with all our qualifications. And each of the points, A1, A2, B1, B2, is split down into 20 points for each one. And when you receive your reporting, it will show you exactly where you are within each of those levels. So, something else for you to think about. I want you to look at the list that you can see on screen and think about which of these skills you will learn when you study for one of our business qualifications. So we've got chatting with fellow students, giving presentations, writing reports, problem solving, writing an academic essay, negotiating, understanding a novel, understanding a report, attending meetings, understanding films, writing a creative story, telephone skills, describing someone, discussing the weather, decision making, socialising and networking. Do you think you know the answer? Let's have a look. So these are the skills that you are going to learn when you study for one of our qualifications. Giving presentations, writing reports, problem solving, negotiating, understanding a report, attending meetings, telephone skills, decision making, socialising and networking. These are all really important business communication skills. You're going to need to use these in your daily life. And preparing for a qualification like, like ours, our business qualifications, will teach you all about these really important skills. So, we also use something called can-do statements. And these are related to the CFR. 
and they tell you what you are able to do with the language that you learn. So you can see here that we've got things like for reading and writing, that you can understand the meaning of, of letters. You can write simple reports. You can ask for factual information. You can pass on messages. You can express your opinion. So these are all really important skills and these will be proved through you gaining a qualification like one of our business qualifications. So very briefly, to tell you a little bit about the exam, you can find more detail on our website, but you can see that each exam at each level has a reading, writing, listening and speaking component. And as the exams become more difficult from preliminary through Vantage to higher, you can see that some of the exams get a little bit longer. And that's because um, as the exams get more difficult, there's more information that you need to uh, consider and uh, more complex questions that you need to answer. So, I said that we're going to focus on the listening and the speaking exam, but I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the reading and writing before we go on to that. So you can see that for each exam, the, write, um, the, the reading paper is about an hour. For the preliminary exam, it's a mix of reading and writing together, but for Vantage and higher, it's just one hour. You have to read a mixture of short, and longer texts. You have to read for gist, which means what's the general um, meaning of the, of the reading task. And also you'll have to read for specific pieces of information. And there's lots of different types of questions, such as matching statements to parts of the text that you're reading, multiple choice questions for you to answer, and multiple choice close, which is like that gap fill exercise we saw right at the beginning where you had to predict the word that was missing from the sentences. There's lots of practice that you can find for free on our website and I've put some links for you at the bottom of this slide. When you're preparing for the reading test, you have to familiarise yourself with all the question types that you'll have to face in the exam and practice them using those free materials on our website. Remember I said at the beginning that if you are familiar with the types of questions that you have to answer, you'll be able to focus more on finding the answers and you'll be able to save time and use that time specifically for thinking and finding the answers rather than trying to understand what the questions are. You must always read the instructions. I've said this to you before and it's really important that you do this with all the exams that you take. Read the instructions carefully so you understand exactly what it is that you have to do to prepare your answer. You should try to do as much general reading as possible in the classroom and at home. It really doesn't matter what you read as long as you read widely. You can read newspapers, news reports on the internet, you can read novels, you can read anything that's going to help you to improve your vocabulary and help you to read more quickly and more accurately. Give yourself uh, lots of timings when you practice. See how long it takes you to go through an exam question. How long does it take, take you to answer it? Are you going to be able to answer all the questions in the time given for the exam? And remember, when you're doing an exam, if there are some questions that you don't know, it's better to leave them and come back to them later because you might spend a lot of time trying to find the answer and then not have enough time to finish the exam. And remember, don't rely on word spotting. With exams from Cambridge, often the words that you see in a question will not be the same words that you're looking for in the answer. Okay, so we'll talk very briefly about the writing test as well before I move on. So with the writing exam, you are going to be tested on four specific skills. Content, make sure that what you're writing is relevant to the task. So if you've been asked to write an email and you've been given some instructions about what that email should contain, make sure that that's what you do and the content of your answer includes all the information that they're looking for. You'll also be tested on your communicative achievement. How well are you able to get your message across is it easy to understand? Is it interesting? Is it engaging? Also, how have you organised your answer? Is it well structured? 
Are you able to link your ideas together? Have you used skills like paragraphing, punctuation? And then think about the language that you're using. Have you tried to use a range of grammatical structures? Have you tried to use a range of vocabulary? The more structures and the more complex vocabulary you try to use, the more opportunity you have to do well in the exam. So remember, just like in the reading exam, familiarise your, familiarise yourself with the types of questions that you'll be asked and practise them. Make sure that you plan your answers before you write the task out fully. Just a short plan with a few bullet points will help you to structure your answer better. Do try and use a range of vocabulary as I mentioned before. The more you can show the examiner that you know, the better opportunity you have of getting a good mark. And make sure that you've given yourself enough time to answer both tasks in the writing exam. OK, we're going to spend more time now looking specifically at the listening and the speaking part of the exam. So, first of all, let's have a look at what's in the listening paper. Here, you can see that in each of the exams, it takes around 40 minutes to take the listening exam. Preliminary, there are four parts of the exam and 30 questions for you to answer, whereas in Vantage and Higher, there are three parts of the exam, but still 30 questions for you to answer. You will be listening to a mix of monologues. A monologue is when one person is talking, and you'll also listen to speakers interacting with each other. For example, they might be in a meeting situation or colleagues talking together about a topic. You'll hear a range of accents, both British and American, as well as others too. It's a very international exam. And there are different types of questions that you'll have to answer. For example, you might have to take notes. You might need to listen for specific information or, or a topic. There are activities where you have to match pieces of information. You might need to match paragraphs to paragraph titles to a, um, to a topic, for example. And there are multiple choice questions that you'll need to answer as well. Now, let's look at two important techniques related to synonyms and paraphrasing, which you can use in both the listening and the speaking exam. You need to use synonyms and paraphrasing in part one of the listing exam to complete notes. In part two, when you have to do a matching activity. In part three, when you're looking for specific information. And there are lots of ways that you can improve your vocabulary and the opportunity to paraphrase. So just to go over the definitions of what those words mean, a synonym is a word that means the same as another word. So for example, you can have vehicle and car. They are synonyms. And paraphrasing is when you use a number of words to describe a thing. So you could say um, a car is a vehicle that contains an engine and four wheels that gets you from A to B. What I've done here is to give you an example from the Cambridge Online Dictionary. This is a fantastic resource. It's available free of charge and it can really help you to improve your vocabulary. Just looking at the information that's available here, you can see that we have the word marketing, followed by a definition of what that word means. You can click on different pronunciations, both UK and US pronunciation. You can see that there are examples of here of how the word is used. And there's a list of similar words and related words. This will help you with using synonyms and paraphrasing as well. So online dictionary is a great way for you to expand your vocabulary. There's something else that you can use which I really like. This is called Freya's model. And what we do here is that we start with putting a word in the center. Then we give a definition. We give some examples of how that word is used. We add any special characteristics. And then we add any words that are non-examples or cannot be used in the same way. Let's have a look together. So in the middle we have the word marketing. 
Then we have the definition. A job encouraging people to buy a product or service or a verb describing this. Then we've got some characteristics. So you can see here that marketing is an uncountable noun. It's also a verb. It can collocate together with things like marketing team, marketing plan, marketing campaign. Here's an example. The marketing team have started a new campaign. And we've also got a non-example here stating that marketing is not the same as to sell. So you can't say she works in a shop marketing clothes. You would say she works in a shop selling clothes. So you can see that we followed the similar model to the online dictionary definition here. But by doing it yourself, it helps you to internalize the words and therefore learn them and remember them more deeply than just by looking at them online. So, let's give you an example that's taken from the listening exam. I'm going to read this text out for you and I want you to look at the multiple choice question and see if you can guess what the answer is. We're fortunate to have as our guest tonight, Jose Martinez, the founder and director of Pizza Rapida. Jose was brought up in America and started his working life there. Now, he is one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Europe. How did he achieve this? Well, he began his rise to success in Europe when he launched his pizza delivery chain from a small shop in the Spanish capital, Madrid, 10 years ago. Do you know what the right answer is? Let's have a look together. So the right answer is B. Jose Martinez became successful by establishing an innovative retail business. Now remember that I said in our exams, the words that you see in the questions will not be the same as the word you're looking for for the answer. You need to use paraphrasing, you need to use synonyms. And here, launched is used as a, syn as a synonym to talk about um, establishing a new business. And you often launch a new and innovative product. So it fits in really well, and that's why this is the right answer. So you can see by expanding your vocabulary, by learning what the word launch means, and being able to relate it to those other words that you can see in the question, you're gonna have a much better chance of doing well in the exam. Okay, let's look at some other ways that you can learn vocabulary. So, here we have a definition. A person, shop, or business that sells goods to the public. Do you know what the right answer is? It's a retailer. Let's have a look at another example. A company or person that provides things that people want or need, especially over a long period of time. Do you know that answer? It's a supplier. Okay, let's have a look at one more. Money that is earned in trade or business after paying the costs of producing and selling goods and services. The answer is profit. Now, I wanted to show you these examples. These are called flashcards, and I used a great online tool called Quizlet to create these flashcards. Quizlet's free for you to use, you can find it on the internet, and it's really easy for you to create a range of flashcards which will help you to learn vocabulary. You could also use them in your class, you can use them with your friends, you can set quizzes to test yourself and the other students. So, some more tips for you can, that you can use when you're improving your listening skills. Now, you should read as much as possible to increase your range of vocabulary. Now I know we're talking about listening, but reading is also really important to help you improve your listening and writing skills, because by reading, you're going to become more fluent in reading the language, you're going to learn about new words, you're going to see about how sentences are structured, paragraphs are put together, etc. It's really useful. You should always try to listen to English as much as possible. There's so many ways that you can listen to English for free these days. 
So of course, you can listen to podcasts, you can watch TV shows, documentaries, online videos are really useful as well. You can listen to songs and try to understand what the lyrics are. You can download the lyrics as you listen. Uh, one thing that I do, which I find particularly useful, is to watch something in English with the subtitles on the screen. Because that way, if you can't quite catch the word, you can see it on the screen and it's really helpful for you to understand how words are being used and to help you when they're not being uh, pronounced particularly clearly. When you listen to something new, you should try to write down a short summary of the information that you heard. This will help you to improve your skills in looking for specific pieces of information. And remember, that's something that you have to do in the listening exam. You should also, as you listen, listen again, stop, pause. Can you remember what comes next? Can you predict? Remember, prediction is a really important skill as well that you're going to need in the exam. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, you should do plenty of practice tests. That will make the format of the exam more familiar. I mentioned that we've got lots of free practice tests on our website, but if you are studying for a business qualification, you can also use uh, the practice tests for our other exams at the same level. It's still going to be really good listening practice for you. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the speaking paper now. So you can see, just like with the other exams, that the speaking exam gets slightly longer as you go through the levels from 12 minutes up to 16 minutes. There are three parts to the speaking. There will be a conversation uh, in part one between yourself and the interlocutor. Interlocutor is the examiner who talks to you. There's also another examiner in the room who doesn't talk to you. They just listen and write down your marks. There's also uh, a mini presentation that you have to deliver in part two. Then in part three, you have to do what's called a collaborative task. There's going to be another student or maybe two other students in the room with you. And the collaborative task is that you need to talk together with, with the other student while the examiner and the interlocutor are listening to you. You can find lots of examples of the business speaking tests on YouTube. And you can see uh, I've given you some links there. Do familiarise yourself with the exam. Remember that, as I mentioned before, there are two examiners in the room. The interlocutor, the one who speaks to you, and the other examiner who sits just to the side of you and uh, doesn't speak but notes down your marks. It's important that you know this so that when you go into the exam room, you won't feel nervous that there's somebody there who isn't talking to you. You know what now why there are two examiners. Okay. So, when you take the exam, the examiners are looking for you to demonstrate your ability in a number of different areas. First of all, they'll be looking for the grammar and vocabulary that you use. Just like in the writing exam, you should try to make the most of what you know. Try to speak and use as many different grammatical uh, uh, um, phrases and as many different words as you can to really show the examiner how well you know and can use the language. The examiner can only mark you on what they hear. So show them how good you are. Show off your language ability. They're also going to be looking at what we call discourse management. And this is really how much relevant information do you give when the examiner asks you a question. It's really important, just like in the writing exam, that your answers are relevant. So if the examiner, for example, asks you what you did at the weekend, it's a good idea for you to talk about what you did at the weekend, not something else. They're also going to be checking your pronunciation, but don't worry, the examiner isn't looking for you to have a perfect British or American accent. What they are looking for is that you can be easily understood. Having an accent is not important. What's important is that they can understand what it is that you're trying to say. And finally, they're looking for you to show interaction. Can you keep the conversation flowing, both with the other students in the exam and also with the interlocutor? 
Remember what I said, the examiner can only mark you on what they hear. If you give very short answers, or if you use very simple language, they're not going to be able to give you a very high mark. You have to show what you can do with the language. Show them exactly how complex the, the grammar is that you can use, the range of words that you can use. Feel confident and show them what you can do with the language in the exam. And that's the way to get really good marks. OK, we mentioned that there are three parts of the speaking test. Let's have a look at a little bit more detail at part two, which is a mini presentation. You'll be given a minute to prepare what you want to say, and then you have to talk for a minute. The interlocutor will give you a piece of paper with some instructions on it. So for example, here it says, what is important when planning an advertising campaign? And you've got a couple of prompts here to help you. So for example, you might need to think about market research, and you might need to think about how to select the appropriate medium. That means, are you going to advertise on the internet, or on television, or on radio? And you can add your own points. You should use that minute wisely to prepare your answer. And then, once you've prepared your answer, you need to talk for a minute. Talking for a minute can be quite difficult if you've never done it before. And so, one example that I'd like to give you is to use something like a timer. And the timer will help you to understand how long a minute is and how you need to structure your answer in order to use up that whole minute. Because what you don't want to do is um, only speak for 30 seconds or, alternatively, speak for too long. So here, I've got an example of a timer that I've taken uh, from the internet. And I really like this because it's a, it's, it, it's a visual, it's very visual. It shows you how much time you've got left. When all the sand runs to the bottom, you've run out of time. And it's a fun way uh, to help you to uh, prepare for the, for the second part of the speaking test. Something else that you can do is to um, create a, a mind map. This is quite a complex one, um, all about the life of an advertisement. You can do a much simpler one, um, and you can do it on a piece of paper with a pen before you start to speak. But this is just to give you an example of the kind of things that you can find on the internet that show you all the details about a particular topic, and it can help you to structure your answers. OK, let's look at some tips for improving your speaking skills. Remember that you need to try to speak English as much as possible, both in class or outside with your friends. I know that it often feels uncomfortable to speak to your friends um, in the English language when you can speak perfectly well in your own language, but just the activity of speaking to another person, hearing your own voice, seeing how that you structure your answers in your own mind before you present them, it's really important, it's really going to help you. Just like learning a musical instrument, the more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. You should record yourself speaking, listen back, and write down any notes on ways that you can improve. Nearly everyone has a smartphone these, these days, and you can record yourself on there quite easily. You'll be surprised when you play back your voice, the things that you pick up and it really helps you to try to improve the way that you talk. Remember in the exam to give yourself time to prepare before you speak. This will help you to feel less nervous and it will give you confidence in what you're saying. You don't have to come out with the first thought that enters your mind. You can think for a few seconds and then give your answer. It's great that if you can talk to other people around the world, as well as your friends. And if you're interested in things like online gaming, where you'll be wearing a headset, it's a great, it's a great opportunity for you to speak to other people. And of course, um, you can use Skype as well if you've got friends living overseas. But remember, it's really important that you shouldn't give out your personal information. You should stay safe online. And again, as I've said with all the other exams, Try and do as many practice tests as possible. There's lots of free resources on our website that you can use. 
And don't be shy about using your language. Don't be shy about speaking. It's really important that you should feel confident and use the language that you've learned. Okay, so now I'd just like to tell you through, uh, take you through a few really useful um, websites that you can use to help you to improve your English. So this is one taken from the British Council's website. Um, they've got some great resources to help you Im improve your vocabulary. Um, this is the inter intermediate vocabulary section, but they have them for a wide range and you can see the web link there. But lots of activities relevant to uh, business qualifications there. Here, again, um, there are lots of vocabulary activities that you can do. So you can see here we've got uh, videos for you, can, for you to watch, podcasts for you to listen to. Uh, there's a business magazine. Um, there's tip, tips and hints on how you can improve your emails. Again, all available free of charge. This is a fantastic um, new program that's available on, on the Cambridge English website called Write and Improve. Write and Improve is brilliant because it gives you the opportunity to practice writing on screen using a keyboard and then the artificial intelligence which is used um, in this program will give you feedback on how you can improve your writing and then you get the opportunity again to practice and then you'll get more feedback again so the idea is the more you write the more feedback you get the more chance you have to improve your writing skills it's available free of charge and it's a really good program here you can see some examples of how the auto marker will mark your writing it looks at things like have you used the right word is it in the right format have you used the right tense they'll also be um, give you feedback on your sentence structure your paragraphing etc etc it's a great tool and I really recommend you using this. So, just to look a little bit again at what we've talked about together today. First of all, we've understood the benefits of taking a business qualification. We've learnt more about the different parts of the exam, especially the listening and the speaking part, which I know that you find the most challenging. We've understood some practical ways to help you to prepare and develop your language skills and we've looked at some useful strategies that you can use to help you to improve things like fluency and vocabulary etc. So I hope you found today's session uh, useful and I'm sure you'll see some more videos from me in the future about how you can improve your chances of doing really well in our business qualifications. Thank you so much.